I printed off. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship today as we gather here this morning. Um, just a, a few reminders of things that are coming up. Uh, today there was the breast cancer thing outside, a reminder that this is uh, breast cancer month, and so they had did a walk and tried to raise some, raising some funds for breast cancer awareness. So we give thanks for those of you who participated and those who, who did so. Um, we also, today, uh, Sweet Sounds, it's, uh, there's a jazz uh, music and some desserts out at Faith Lutheran Church between two and four. Um, this is uh, an event to try and to, um, to help with Lutheran Campus, the Lutheran Campus Center, the ministries, it's one of our partners here. Um, so if you wanna have a little, hear some good music, um, have some treats, and enjoy the, a little time outside, go out to Faith Lutheran uh, between two and four, and uh, join us for that. Um, you, it's, it's a raised support for our Lutheran Campus Center. Uh, as you know, probably that uh, there was a fire down there last week, and um, right now we don't know much more. There's more questions than answers at this point. Uh, uh, we're still waiting on the, the fire marshal to do their part, to determine the cause, so then we can start cleaning up and making, making adjustments. But you know, we've already started the process, but we're kind of waiting on them. So a um, lot more questions. But if you, uh, one of the ways Central is helping out is uh, Pastor Corrine, the pastor at the Campus Center, is gonna be working out of our library here. So um, you might see her here as you come into church during the week to do some things. And um, you should be in the library. So if you usually meet in the library for a meeting, let us know. We'll get you a, find you an alternative place for the next couple of weeks as we determine what's happening with them. Um, in 10 days, Wednesday the 16th, uh, there's an organ concert here at noon. So it's the next of our organ, organ concert series. So come and join us for that. They've been really good uh, and enjoyable uh, treats in the middle of the afternoon. On Octo October 26th, I get the right date right? October 26th, we're doing a trunk or treat um, for the community. We're inviting our members to, to put in their cars, park them in our parking lot, have, a, have candy available, dress up if you'd like, um, and come in and have an event for the community, for the kids to come and have a safe place to trick or treat. So if you wanna know more about what, you're, what you might need to do, you can talk to Pastor Kristen and she can give you all the details about that as well. And then in a couple of weeks, we are doing a new member class. So if you're curious about uh, what it means to be a member of Central, what, uh, what you would like to have some ans answers, uh, questions answered, um, come on that day. If you, wanna, if you got some questions ahead of time about what that means, you can talk to me or talk to Pastor Kristen, and we can get you those details. But show up and be with us on uh, the 20th between services, and uh, we'll go through all of that uh, that day. I think that takes care of all of our announcements for this morning. So with that, I invite you to rise as we sing our opening hymn, Earth is Full of Wit and Wisdom.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. So let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins, draw near to us, with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity, to remember our sins no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in a loving community with one another. Form us for the life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called them, every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one should be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the hearing of the gospel this morning.
Holy Gospel for this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark in the 10th chapter. Now some Pharisees came to test Jesus, and they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, what did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. They are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house where the disciples asked him again, they said to him, whoever, uh, they asked him again about this matter. He said, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Now people were bringing little children to him in order that Jesus may touch them, but the disciples spoke sternly to them. Jesus saw this. He was indignant and he said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these as the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them into his arms. He laid hands on them and he blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. I invite you to be seated and we invite the children to come forward for our message here this morning. morning. God loves you. The first thing I usually tell you is three important things, no matter what else I have to tell you. Does anybody remember what that first thing is? I just said it to you. God loves you. And today I want to tell you from the Bible why I tell you that. In fact, Pastor Short just read to you, hold this a moment. Here's the part, and this is about you. Some people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples scolded the people. When Jesus, Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Well, where are the children here? That's you, okay? So there it was right there in the Bible. Jesus wanted the children to come to him because he loves them. Okay, I tell you, Jesus loves you. The second thing I tell you is Jesus, or not, yeah. God loves you, God made you, and everybody here and everybody in the world. Does it say that in the Bible? Somebody just read that to you, didn't they? From the very first book in the Bible, the book of Genesis, the very first chapter. Then God said, and now we will make human beings. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. 
I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all wild animals. Okay. So, God loves you. We know that from the Bible. God made you. I just read that. You've heard it for the second time today. And the third thing I say is, and he loves us all. Now, I think almost everybody here has memorized the next verse I want to tell you. That verse is from the book of John. John 3.16, will you people help me say it? You probably memorized it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loves the world. The world means everybody. So when somebody does something really nice for you, what should you say? You should say thank you. I think we should say thank you to God right now. Let's bow our heads, and I'll say the words, and you say them after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for making me. And thank you for blessing all the children and the grown-ups in the whole world. Amen. Okay, see you next time. Thank you, Sylvia, for bringing that message. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. These texts we heard today from Mark and from Genesis, they can sometimes be difficult to hear, but they also probably bring about some memories, some feelings from our past. The images that we heard bring to mind maybe a tear for, to your eye as you heard the words from the, work, the words of Genesis, reminding you of um, your wedding day or the wedding day of someone that's close to you as you heard the words about God creating man and, wife, man and woman and out of my bone. This is one, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh that you become one. Or maybe a tear of sadness as you thought about the words that Jesus, as he was asked about divorce, and you've had to deal with divorce, or you had to deal with somebody and you're close to you has, has done so. But I think ultimately these verses remind us and remind me is really it's all about, about living in relationships. But what does it mean to be in relationship one to another and to our God? They would talk to us about what it means to create a new way to uphold those relationships, reminding us that we are to love and to bless each other, even if the culture sometimes wants to tell us to live differently. And these passages are no different for me than they are for you. As a pastor, I deal with people all the time, both in broken relationships and those who are forming new ones. As a, a man who's been divorced, I understand both of those texts as well from my own personal experience. They bring, they bring joys as you think about the new relationships as they begin, or sadness as they break apart. The texts that we heard for today often get used in weddings, and I've done a number of them in my time as ministry. And so there's just that joy that comes. In fact, there was one, I did a, I did a wedding for a young couple yesterday, and the, the joy that's in the, in the room as they came together as husband and wife is one that everyone can just celebrate. Because I don't believe anybody ever really, um, ever really comes into this idea of marriage, comes into this to build a relationship with another, just thinking that, oh, somewhere along the way we can just get a divorce. 
Well, I know of one exception, but that is a story that way too much longer to tell. But most people come into to come together in marriage as husband and wife, as spouses, they do so for a lifelong commitment. They do so in a way to begin a lifelong relationship. But sadly, because of divorce and breakups, I even talk to young couples who are, are living together and somewhere along the way we get talking about marriage and they're like, we don't want that for us. We saw all the ways in which our parents struggled during those hard times as during while their marriage fell apart. And we don't want that in our lives. So I tried to take a chance to, to have a conversation with them about what does it mean to be, to come together? What does it mean to be in relationship between spouses? What does it mean to build those relationships up, to work with compromise through those hard times, to put the needs of the others in front of your own, to love each other, to follow the example of our Savior who gave his life for those he loved, as we're reminded from uh, Sylvia as we said those words from John 3.16 together. But in our text, Jesus and his disciples are continuing their journey. So we continue our reading through the Gospel of Mark, and we're following the, the, the readings from the last couple of weeks in, in chapter 9, and now we're, we begin chapter 10. And so they've come down, they've continued their travels and their journeys here in Galilee, and they're gathering together, and all along Jesus continues to, to welcome and have gained followers, but also a few skeptics. Because after all, Jesus is doing what Jesus is doing, and some of the leaders and the others aren't quite sure who Jesus is because they really can't say he's one or the other because he does things unexpected. Unexpected from what they, they think he should be if he's going to be a teacher or going to be a prophet or who he might be. So they're trying to work out where Jesus fits in this, you know, pigeonhole of life that we try to do. It happens in our culture as well, in our church, in our life, in our society. And so Jesus is being confronted by these Pharisees because they want to figure out where, he's, where he stands, where, he, where to put him in one place or another to determine what would, how they want to treat him or look at him or whether they have to pay attention to him at all. And so they come like we do on ourselves, right? So we'll ask them where they stand on some divisive uh, issue of the day. For him, for them, that day, it was divorce. So they come and they ask him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife, right? They ask for a man to divorce his wife. And, and they were just kind of asking the question. But Jesus comes back in a more specific manner. Well, what did Moses command you? Well, he said, well, Moses said well, they could write a, a man could write a certificate of dismissal. But Jesus reminds him, it's because of your hardness of heart. Because of your hardness of heart that he wrote that for you. But divorce was not the plan that God had for you. Instead, God's hope was that the people, all people, would, build, would be in relationship with each other, that they would have a partner in life, one with another. They would also be in relationship with their God for the sake of creation and for each other. And he quotes some of the texts that we had from our, gospel, from our lesson from Genesis. Right? There we're reminded of how we came about of what God did in creation. That God desires to be in relationship with his creation. He created all things, right? He says, we are told he created the garden and he planted the trees, but there was no one to till it, so he created man. And then he said, well, man should not be alone. We need to find, need to find a helper, a, a workmate, a partner. And so he started creating all the birds of the air and the animals of the field, and he brings them to the man, and the man names them, but he says, no partner, suitable partner, was found. So God caused the sleep to come upon, and he creates woman, and finally he says, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. A suitable helper, a co-worker, an equal partner, as life is created. Mostly we hear this in the text of marriages between a man and a woman. But the underlying is really about the bond that is created between two people, between God and his creation. And relationships are central to who we are, to who we are as children of God, to who we are 
as fellow Christians with one with another. But as we know, relationships are a difficult task, difficult thing to hold on to sometimes. As a pastor, I work with a lot of people trying to build relationships or, or mend those that are falling apart. I get people come to me on a regular basis saying, telling me this is what's going on in their world. Can you help me figure it out? Because I'm feeling like I'm lost and I'm alone. I feel like I'm the only one. I feel like everything's turned against me. They feel like they're just by themselves. And it doesn't really matter whether it's about a relationship between a husband and a wife and a family. It doesn't matter if it's between friends, between people who live together. People have differences and, and, and breakups do happen. But we live in a broken world and we want to help mend that. And so come, people come and they, and they talk just as they did in Jesus' day. How do we go about doing so? Because they're not just exclusive to divorce, but they're just increasingly about people living life, trying to figure out who can I be in relationship and who is so far out on the other side that I just can't pay, pay attention. There was a... Some people having a conversation here at the church the other day, they were after a meeting that they had had, and they were just kind of generally talking about what was going on in the world and sharing their views. And they were sharing their views respectively. They were listening to each other, even though some of them had a different view from the other. But I could tell as I was joining in the conversation that a couple of them really felt like they were on the, on the edge of the rest of the group that was there. But they, they spoke their mind. And the others listened respectfully as they did, but it was clear that they were feeling a little bit on the outside, that maybe they were a little bit alone. But that's what happens. They, but at the same time, as I came into the conversation, it was clear they had more in common about the things they were talking about than the little things that they disagreed upon. But how so often does that happen for us? that we can agree upon many things, but it's that one little thing that we disagree upon that somehow seems to make that, make that split, make that relationship break apart. So how is it that we sometimes figure, how can we look beyond that to keep that relationship together? And I think that's what Jesus was speaking out in, this, in these texts. It was not about divorce. He was speaking about the breakup of relationships between people. Because when relationships are broken up, right, in the, in the case of marriage, right, the one becomes two, but the two are never equal. There's always a difference between them, whether by money or power or whatever it might be. They're never equal. Broken relationships happen between, whenever there's a bond between people and they, figure, and, they, and they come to an understanding they just can't get beyond it. But when breakup happens, Innocent lives are, are affected. And, the, and, and sometimes, and most of the times, there's somebody that becomes more vulnerable than the other, and the vulnerable ones have their lives changed. When relationships are broken, we often want to determine who are the winners and the losers so that we know who we can kind of continue to be in relationship with and those we want to ignore or put aside or marginalize. When relationships break down, it's, it's about distrust and hatred over the person's ability to maybe even hold on to their faith, let alone trust anyone else. But that's, I think, where the church comes, where we can help build back up that trust, to know them know that God is still there for them. And that's why I think Jesus gives us that example in the last part of our reading from our gospel. This is the third time in the last three weeks that We've heard Jesus welcome a little one into his, into his arms, into his circle, right? He says, let the little children come to me. Let the little children come. In a way, Jesus is saying, because in his day, children were some of the most vulnerable people in society, right? They were ignored. They were just, they weren't held up as, as our society currently does, right? We don't, they didn't hold up their children as they did now. They were just something that just kind of had to deal with until they got old enough they could take care of themselves. They were the most vulnerable. 
And so Jesus welcomes them because he, as he welcomed all people. In Jesus' day, women, especially if they were divorced, the children, the most vulnerable, the, the poor and the needy, sometimes they would always push to the margins. But Jesus reminds them to welcome, to welcome the little children, to welcome others like, the little, like them. And then, and then he says, we are told, he lays hands on them. Now, this is another one of those things you need to kind of put, in your, put in, your, in, your, in your mind that whenever you hear about Jesus laying his hands upon someone, it's about laying his hands for healing. Jesus heals as he lays his hands upon them. And then we're also told he blesses them. So Jesus welcomes them, he heals them, and he blesses them. And we're reminded that this is what Jesus does. And if this is what Jesus does, this is where God is found. And if this is where God is found, then this is where the church should be as well. Because today we're reminded that we are not to use our power to separate others, to separate ourselves from each other, but to offer that hand, that hand to accompany and walk alongside others who are vulnerable and lost, to assure them that they are not alone, that their God has not forgotten them or forsaken them. That the church can be here to help build up relationships, to reach out and to bless, to reach out and to bless just as we have been blessed, in order that we might set that example for others, that they may be in relationship with each other and with the creation and with God. Amen. So I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our hymn this day, Bind Us Together. Living in trust and hope, we are bold to say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. Help us to listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal 
and justice, God of grace, creator of every creature on earth, reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. We pray for all affected by Hurricane Helen and its af aftermath. God of grace. Sovereign God, we give thanks that you are mindful and benevolent even to us mere mortals. Accompany, accompany us when, with hardness, us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations. Endow leaders with minds for justice and hearts for compassion. God of mercy. Restoring, Lord, grant healing and wholeness to all those who are sick and suffering, especially today remembering Ken, Ella, Linda, Karen, Scott, Bobby, Gloria, Irene, Peter, David, Sherry, Ed, Linda, Kara, Clarence, Jared, Clay, Diane, Janet, Tom, Mike, Jackson, and the family of Pat Schultz. Work through medical professionals to diagnose, ease pain, and give life to all who seek wisdom and experience. God of grace. We pray for the Lutheran Campus Minute Center today as they recover from the fire of in their building. God of grace. Identifying God, humans will be crea created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and for one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. Help your love inspire us to become supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace.
God, giver of all good things, receive the gifts we bring, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that they may be used to your purposes for life and love in the world. Amen. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your holy word, your Holy Spirit and word, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receive forgiveness of sin. We may be formed to live as your holy people and given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. All are welcome at this table, and all is ready.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and have nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Before we close, just a quick reminder that this morning um, there was a breast cancer walk that went around Wyndham Park, and there are a lot of things left, um, goodies and just awareness stuff. So. They have moved that all inside here at the Narthex, so I invite you to stop um, by the table. They're doing a lap quilt um, raffle as well, so there's um, donation and um, lots of things to do there, so check it out. And thank you to all the women um, and men who helped put that on. And now may God Almighty, God Most Merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Please join us in our sending song, Now Thank We All Our God. Go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.